The Nationals have a look of a confident team, and it's been nothing but high fives for them in this series. Well, Bruce Bochy's club has come down with a slight case of the crud, but the cure for that is on the mound today. Tim Hudson looks to turn things around. Giants, Nationals, and it's coming up next. Hey, we've got day baseball here at AT&T Park. Our fans filing in to watch the final game of this four-game series, Nationals and Giants. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dwayne Kuyper. Alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well, the Giants have lost three straight. That's unusual territory for them. They haven't been swept this year, and this is a four-game series. So go get them, Tim Hudson. Well, indeed, and if you check out the lineup today, there's not a lot of guys getting days off today. This is a game that I'm sure means a whole lot to Bruce Bochy and all these Giants. They don't want to have another team come in here and sweep them in their own yard, certainly not a four-gamer. So you throw out a guy who's got a 16-5 lifetime record against them, and that would be Tim Hudson, and take your chances. Buster Posey is back behind the dish on this Thursday afternoon. When we come back, Amy G is going to take a look at a Tim Hudson milestone from last year. It's a big one. So stick around. Amy G with that right after this.
beautiful city. It's a beautiful day, and the Giants playing some day game baseball at AT and T Park. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Amy Gutierrez, and your Giants—they've got their back up against a wall as they try to avoid a sweep today in this four-game series against the Washington Nationals. They have Tim Hudson on the hill, and one word to describe his season: stellar. Actually, you could probably use that word to describe Tim Hudson's career. A lot of milestones and a lot of special moments, like his 200th win and that's our at t u verse rewind this afternoon we take you back april 30th 2013 turner field and hudson is with the atlanta braves and he's facing the nationals and along with seven strong innings hudson hits his third career home run the wife likes that now 11 wins later he's currently the winningest active pitcher in the majors with 211 victories he has a 16 and 5 career record against the nationals and that ranks among one of his best against any club tim hudson on the hill today crew and kipe will be back with lineups and first pitch and after these messages we're going to check in with our comcast sportsnet studios for an update stay with us
the admission free boardwalk is now open daily. It's a cool afternoon at 60 degrees. We have winds at 13 miles per hour. You can see where the humidity is, and it's mostly not mostly cloudy. I would say mostly sunny. Let's take a look at the Nationals lineup. It'll be Span, Rendon, and Jason Worth. Now he's been really good over the last eight games, and he's got good numbers lifetime against Hudson. LaRoche, Zimmerman, Desmond, the former giant Kevin Franzen. He's hitting seventh, and it's Lobatone, and the pitcher, Blake Tynan. On the hill today for the Giants will be Tim Hudson, the three time All Star, making his 13th start of the season. He has been one of the best pitchers in baseball going six and two of the one nine seven ERA and that ranks him as the second lowest in baseball. He struck out fifty five batters. He allows eleven walks and eight two and a third. Giants are nine and two in his starts and he has won his last four. When you take your bats against him you're going to see a low nineties fastball. They will throw you a lot of sinkers. He will cut the fastball. He's got a curveball a slider a split and a change up. And a lifetime against this. Nationals team. He has had great success. 16 and 5 with a 2.45 ERA. Let's take a look at the defense playing behind Hudson today, starting in the Giants outfield from left to right. It'll be Colvin, Pagan, and Pence, the best arm in right field. Crawford Sandoval patrol the left side of the infield with Crawford back or Sandoval back in the lineup after being ill last night. Adrianza and Morris will be on the right side. And Buster Posey will be in the squad putting down the signs. Good to see the panda feeling better. Had flu like symptoms last night. The scores in these three games 9 2, 2 1, 6 2. So here's Span. Man steps in hitting at 275. And the first pitch of the ball game is on its way. And we get started at 12:45. A home run 14 driven in for Span. And he bounces this one to Morris. And Morris will shovel it to Hudson, and they just get spanned. And that's how this game gets started. All right, time to take a look at our Nissan keys to the game. And uh, the first one is the money hit, which has been the signature of this 2014 Giants team. Has been lacking in this series. They need to refine the money hit. And also, Hudson Sink. When he's got a sink, you're going to see ground balls. When you see ground balls, he's going to pitch well. Those are our Nissan keys to the game. The money hit. Hudson sink. Okay. You usually run those by me. Today you just kind of didn't. Well, yeah, I, I kind of wanted to surprise yeah, you. Yeah, but I, I approve. We're good. Here's Rendon. Rendon and Hudson, no history. Is this one is rolled foul? Rendon feeling pretty confident that he didn't need a lot of history to swing at that first pitch. Uh, you'll see a lot of guys do that against Hudson because they know he's around the plate. They don't want to get into a two strike situation with him. And they want to beat him early. And they think the best hit they're going to get, or the best pitch they're going to get, is the first pitch. It makes sense to me. And that's in tight. Let's take a look at the motion by Tim Hudson by our ex most brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Very balanced and upright really loads up the inside part of his back foot as he starts to stride towards his target. Very compact repeatable motion. And that really has been the success story of his career. And for Hudson 211 lifetime victories against 113 losses amazing win percentage. And the 2 1 delivery. Is hit on the ground. To. Adrianza two outs. 
So two ground balls is a good sign. You see your National League ERA leaders. Cueto, who was fabulous yesterday against the Dodgers, he's on top, then Hudson, and then Adam Wainwright. The Reds beat the Dodgers today four to one. I think it was Alfredo Simon who got the win. Here's Worth who's digging a hole. Yeah, Grinky took the loss in that game. That was a game that started could have been started at 12:30, but the same time last week's game started between the Giants and the Reds. That was a four-game series, and the Reds won the last two games. One ball and one strike. Swing and a miss. One and two. Good curveball. That was really tight, wasn't it? It was. Nice quick little snap. And that really is a great indication of what type of arm strength the guy has when he's able to put that type of spin on a curveball. When his arm's a little tired, you'll see roll on that pitch. Yeah, no roll on that last one. That was good snap. And Worth holds up this time, and it's two and two. This is down the right field line and out of play with Adam LaRoche on deck. This is the home run by Worth yesterday. It was an odd at bat, but this swing wasn't odd at all. Now it came in a two strike situation, and this is the one pitch that really, really upset Matt Cain. He had him in an 0 2 count with curveballs and never went back to the curveball. He got beat on a cutter that leaked out over the plate. And that made it a 4 1 ball game. The Giants never recovered. Center field struck well. Pagan backpedaling, and he'll make the catch to end the inning. Pagan, Pence, and Posey coming up. Pagan Pence and Posey, as Mike mentioned in the open, no days off today. Sandoval, Morris, and Colvin. Crawford, seven game hitting streak, an RBI machine right now, followed by Adrian and Hudson. On the hill today for the Nationals will be the 25 year old rookie, Blake Tynan. Tynan, 6'5, 216 years old, out of Wichita, Kansas. And this is uh, what he has done this year. This is his fourth start. And if you look at the guys he started against, they're pretty impressive. He started against Clayton Kershaw, Edinson Valquez, Andrew Kasher. Now he gets Tim Hudson. That is a rough foursome to try and do battle against. But he's a hard thrower. You're going to see a fastball that goes mid to high 90s, and uh, he's got a slider and a changeup that are very erratic. He doesn't have great control. 
but he's got big time sync with the high velocity. Let's take a look at the defense playing behind Tynan. Starting in the Nationals outfield from left to right will be Zimmerman, Span, and Worth. Good arms in left and in right. Desmond and Rendon on the left side of the infield, friends, and then LaRoche on the right side. And Jose Lobaton will be in the squad putting down the signs. Here's Pagan who takes a strike. Pence to follow. And this is hit up the middle. Desmond will cut it off. And he'll throw out Pagan. You should see a lot of ground balls today. So here's Hunter Pence. Jerry Davis is the home plate umpire. Walcott, Marquez, and Phil Cuzzy from first to third. And the pitch is low. With Buster Posey on deck. Played umpire Jerry Davis, also the crew chief. He's a high ball umpire. You're going to see more belt highs than what you'd normally see with most umpires. Been around a long time, runs a game well. And I think Jerry Davis, too, is one of those umpires that will look for strikes. And that is important. National starters this series three earned runs and in 19 innings one walk 14 strikeouts that have been fantastic. Well we have a winner in the foul ball sweepstakes. And we also have a loser the guy that took the heat if he'd had a glove he'd have had a souvenir. Base hit for Hunter Pence. Boy, he stayed inside that beautifully. And he really went down there and got it. Watch how flat his bat stays as he drops down to go get a knob lead. Stay inside, use the opposite way. And that's really a great philosophy in trying to beat a sinker baller like Tynan. So here's Buster Posey. And Buster takes down low. The thing that makes Tynan so special is that he, he's got sync, but he's got high velocity with the sync. Normally, between the two grips, the two seam fastball, which gives you the sync, and the four seam fastball, that gives you the better velocity. It's a straighter fastball, but you'll get a, a more pumped up velocity with it than you will with the two seam. So when you see a guy throwing an easy 94 96 with a two seam, that's a great arm. That's, that's, that's a standout arm. Do not want to get hit with this guy's fastball. No, 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 no. His 94, 95 mile an hour sink will leave a big bruise. Very heavy. Pence, just a little bit of a lean. He's got seven steel. And the strike, and it makes it two and one. Looked like Posey was going to take a strike. Most of these guys are seeing Tynan for the first time.
just a little too low, so it's three and one. Swing by Buster Posey and it's foul back three and two. When you look at his swing, which is an inside out swing, it really is a swing built to beat Sink. Sink has movement from a right handed pitcher moving in to a right handed hitter. If it run, if he throws it the bell, it's going to run flat into him. If it's down around the knees, it's going to sink with a slight tilt. But it will definitely still work its way back into a right handed hitter. Runner goes, tap to short for Desmond. Desmond will throw out Posey and Pence now in scoring position. And you're going to see that a lot today from Bruce Bochy because of Tynan Sink. You're going to see him starting runners when they're on first base to avoid the double play. Pablo Sandoval, very sick yesterday, did come in to pinch hit and he picked up a base hit. Down the left field line and out of play. So Pablo read right out of bed, taking a good rip. Uh, he should have good rips against Tynan simply because sinker ballers they like the low part of the zone and that naturally feeds the swing of Pablo Sandoval who likes the knee high location. Pence at second, the first base runner in this game. Struck well to Franson, and that'll end the inning. No runs a hit, one left. It's nothing, nothing. Take advantage of this weather and start snapping some pictures and tweeting it to hashtag CSNBA fan photo. Include your name and your hometown. Today we're looking at Beth Labine's dog, Hudson. She says Hudson is always ready for a great game with the SF 
Giants. I think Tim Hudson is too. All right, she's from Placerville, California. Send them in, guys. And here's LaRoche who had that ball just hit his bat. It's no balls and one strike. They say that that uh, beautiful dog is from Petaluma. Placerville. The other P-Town. I gotcha. Jeez, what a shocker. Foul back. It's 0 and 2. Mom. Hey. She brought her glove, got a ball, gamer babe. <laughs> Way to go, Mom. Got on the wrong hand. Other hand. <laughs> hey, everything was going really good until then. Yeah, she still has street cred with me. She brought it. And she's raising a ball player. Nice going, mom. Hit into right center field. Pagan now on the track and he makes the catch. Well, it was announced this week that the 2014 Giant Race runner bobblehead is Buster Posey. And all participants in the 2014 Giant Races will receive the, this exclusive Buster Posey bobblehead. The races which end on the field at AT&T Park take place on September 7th. And they will sell out. So register right now at giantrace.com to secure your Buster Posey runner bobblehead. For more info, visit giantrace.com. So here's Zimmerman who takes a pitch up high. One ball and no strike. Zimmerman. Zimmerman's got 16 career hits against Tim Hudson. And that runs up. It's two and zero. Desmond and LaRoche have some ownage on Hudson. LaRoche more in the home run department. Desmond with lots of hits. There's a call strike. It's two and one. That's that high strike we're talking about with Jerry Davis. You don't see with other umpires. I mean, you're going to get some knee highs, but you'll get some belts too. Two and two. And a breaking ball. Started out right at Zimmerman. Oh, it's three and two. That's a not happy with that one. He really flew open his left side, dragged his arm, and you can feel that right when it happens. You're not going to finish that breaking ball. You're not going to snap it. Sandoval and Posey, but it's going to be the Panda. Well, I guess what you do is you hope it's not a hittable mistake. Well, you're right. I mean, and that's the bad thing. A lot of hanging sliders are just that. They're they're. Fly opens when you, you really try hard to, to add a little extra on. You fly that front shoulder out, you drag, and then you leave a high breaking ball. And if it's close to the strike zone, those are the ones that get hit. So here's Desmond. 14 for 47 against Hudson. Two doubles, a triple, and a home run. And he tried to bunt, and I think when that pitch left Hudson's hand, Desmond was like, oh, "This was a mistake." <laughs> it looked like he was bunting for a sacrifice with this nobody was, on base. This was a mistake. I mean, the guy's got 13 home runs. He's doing you a favor if he's doing this. Certainly not the location that you want to try and bunt a ball down for a base hit from the third base side. And I think he was trying to bunt it down the third base side. So it's one and one to 
Ian Desmond. He's protected. His dermatologist will be very happy. Two and one. Kevin Franson on deck. Desmond not biting. Here's the Dodgers score. Rockies are leading the Braves in Denver 2 0. Another afternoon game in the West. 3 and 2. I'm a little surprised at that take right there. We talked about Desmond's power. He's got 13 home runs. He leads the team in RBIs. He's sitting on a 3 1 count. Great count to look for a fastball. He got the fastball and he had no intention of swinging at it. And Crawford's off his glove. And Pagan gets to it quickly. So it'll be a two out single for Desmond. That ball was hit hard. I don't know if that knuckled. It would, got on him quick. I think it. I think it did. And when we say knuckle, that it doesn't have spin on the ball, and because of that, it'll be just like a knuckleball. Only instead of a 65 <laughs> mile an hour knuckleball that is the normal speed you see from a knuckleball pitcher, this one's going 100 miles an hour. So you can imagine how difficult it is to catch it because it's not predictable. It can move in, out, up, down, like a butterfly. Rans in on the ground, foul. And as hard as that ball was hit, that could not have been comfortable for Crawford trying to catch that thing. You don't miss those, do you? Not at all, especially in the daytime. Hard to see with the background. Fans that wear white in the in behind home plate are not doing their infielders a favor. Sandoval has it. And they'll end the inning. No runs to hit one left. The former national Morris is going to lead it off. Followed by Colvin and Crawford. Business class hosted by Jim Cozumore, uh, Elmer Cozumore. You can do that today at 5 p.m. Today's guest will be NBA Hall of Famer Jerry West, Earthquakes TV analyst Chris Dangerfield. All that and much, much more. Yahoo Sports Talk Live right after the game.
So here's Morris. Morris up the middle in a base hit. Take a look at the back slide, really letting that ball get deep to him. Almost like he's hitting that ball and it's right off his front hip. And that really is his key. Uh, and you hear every day around the batting cage when hitting instructors will tell hitters, let it travel. Let that ball get deep to you. Don't reach out for it. Let it get into the power position. So here's Colvin. And a big chopper foul. One and one to Colvin. Hit high and deep to right. Worth back. Look it up. Off of the wall. And here comes Morris. Morris is digging around third. He's going to score. And the third is Colvin. And it's one nothing Giants. Take a look at the pitch. They set up in the outside corner. It's right up there at the bell out over the middle. A good pitch to hit. And he hits it, goes into a trot. He thinks he gets it. And that ball's got backspin. But here in right center, it's halfway up the wall. Great read for Michael Morris at first base. If this ball is caught by Worth, it's a double play. And right here, Coleman's figured out, I better get going. It ain't out. So it winds up being an RBI triple. But watch Morris, boy, had great read, and here he is gone. Infield is back with Crawford. And Crawford takes high. The carry to this ballpark. Today is in is in center gap to gap. You're getting good carry out right towards the scoreboard, which is the normal drift you get from the wind. So the Giants lead. In this game, it's one nothing. Hit on the ground. Coming in to score is Colvin. It's two nothing. And that folks is a big league at bat. The defense play back. They're trying to stay out of the big inning. They're giving you the run. And if you're Brandon Crawford, you want to keep the ball on the ground. You want to stay out of the strikeout. And that's a great at bat. Hey, he'd love to have a base hit up the middle on the ground. Not a problem. What did Jeff Kent teach us? The money lies in the RBIs. Here's Adrianza. And that's bounce foul. Problem with Jeff Kent, though, he was teaching that to his T ball players. <laughs> he was dead serious. All right, fellas, everybody around here, and uh, you too, sweetheart. Uh, uh, listen up. Just want to tell you something right now. The money lies in the RBIs. <laughs> the kids looked at him like, what? What's he talking about? Slowly hit. And the roach right by the bag. Two outs. I'll never forget the, the pep talk. I mean, it, it really should have been the pep talk you give a rookie class of new draftees in their first day of professional baseball. But, but that was Jeff Kent. Yeah, this was in a sandlot behind some school in Texas. <laughs> 
with the parents around going why did what did he say the money lies in the RBIs Hudson with a swing and a miss he's about due to get hot you mean at the plate at the plate hit no 77 he's a lifetime 166 hitter But he spent a lot of time in Oakland early in his career and he didn't get a lot of at bats there. But he can hit. Tap slowly foul. And it's Desmond on the one hop, and that'll end the inning. So the Giants, a single by Morris, a triple by Colvin, and then Crawford with a ground ball. It's 2 nothing, Giants. the ballpark this is a must have free app for Giants fans when visiting AT&T Park from your mobile device the app allows you to upgrade your seat listen to players walk up music find the closest garlic fry stand check in to unlock special offers and much more go to sfgiants.com slash ballpark app or you can text ballpark to 31826 to download at the ballpark right now so here's Lobaton Lobaton hitting two twenty eight Blake Trinan is on deck. And this is hit right back to Hudson. One out. So here's Trinan. Trinan one for seven. Night and day difference in 
Tim Hudson today than from his last start against the New York Mets, where he really struggled with command. Only two. Yeah, and we talk about it. You, you, you get used to pitch every fifth day, and every fifth day, and you know your arm responds. You do your work, and then there just comes a time where it just doesn't come back. You need a, another two days or whatever. But nevertheless, you got to go out there in that fifth day. And he got him. To his credit, he made it work. The Giants won the game that he pitched in. He got through five, but it was a very tough outing for him. Here, much more crisp stuff, much better command. Here's spin. By the way, every once in a while, we'll eliminate. You like to eliminate, right? Yes, I do. We'll eliminate a letter from the alphabet. And Trinan's case, we eliminated the R for two innings just to give it a rest. That's all right. Span bounced out to Morris in the first. And a breaking ball makes it nothing and two. And that fooled Span. Talked about how much more snap the breaking ball had in the first inning with Hudson. Another example of it there in the 0 1 pitch to Span. And even if it's up around the belt, if it's quick, it can be a good pitch. And this is a foul ball. The cat like reactions of Michael Morris. I think he's enjoying his time at first base. And, you know, it really is remarkable. He spent all the spring, all the first month and a half in left field. When Brandon Bell went down, he assumed the responsibilities of being a first baseman. And it looks like he's played there the yeah, whole year. Absolutely. He went from the outfield to first base in one day. Not a problem. Got him. Nine strikes for Jim Hudson. Game, it's from Matt Williams. 99.9 percent .9 of the time, he's pinpoint with his control. The guys were patient and didn't expand their strike zone, and we were to get to him early. And that's our Geico quote of the game. Well, it's true. I mean, last night, that came not as sharp with the command as he has been. Three walks to start the game, they all scored, and that was the difference in the game. Pagan on the ground to Franson. One out. 
And here's Pence. Yeah, a little sleepy. Didn't get a lot of sleep last night because I was so excited to come to the baseball game. I think he's got a sister there too. Oh, that's the problem. Uh, she'll wear you out. She is not sleepy. She's looking for that gum that those kids are looking for in Denver. <laughs> yep. Put a beeper on that little one. Hunter Pence drove a base hit into right field in the first inning. And it's high. Buster Posey on deck. You know, all right, Mike. Give me your uh, analysis of Jerry Davis in a strike three. Call. All right, Jerry Davis. Yeah, that's very how, solid. That's how I would do it. Very solid. Yeah. He. Yeah. That's cool. I like yeah, that. that's a good one. You've been doing it for a long time. I like that. Penn takes the walk. So far, that's number one. Can you write that down in your notes about umpires? <laughs> I should. <laughs> rate the ring them up. Actually, you know what? I, I don't write anything down about umpires. I should do that. It should be my job. Your job should be rate the ring them ups. That one right there has looked like he's starting the lawnmower. Don't uh, don't give Amy G any ideas. <laughs> Here's Buster Posey. See, I would like to have a collection of all the umpires ring them ups. I mean, uh, to me, I, that would be a. Gr I would buy that. Well, you could get an intern to do that. Yeah. There are students at Comcast all summer long that they're handing out T-shirts for crying out loud. They'd love to do that. That's what we need. We need to have an entire library of the umpires ring them ups. Yeah, absolutely. We could do a half-hour special on that. I, I would watch it. How they signify strike three on a called strike three and ring a guy up with their arm action. They're all different. And a strike to Buster Posey, nothing in two. Nobody's ever done it. Oh, it would be great. Except Leslie Nielsen, and <laughs> he's in it. Yeah, <laughs> he's got to be in it. Absolutely. That may be the best ring him up of all times. He was moonwalking and interns. What was the name of that movie? Uh, that's what we have B.I. for. Oh, two pitch. Here it is. And it gets away briefly, but now it's called a foul ball. Well, that's B.I., our crack stats guy. B.I., which stands for bogus information. Yeah, he just tore his elbow up trying to get to his computer. <laughs> I don't think we got too many guys in the truck that are awake either. Yeah, I, I usually... Get some feedback from the truck, but what was the naked gun or something? Yeah, I think that's it. You got it, partner. We're, naked we're, gun. We're getting confirmation. There's bogus information. Bi, what do you got? Uh, uh. Oh, you got it, Mike. There it is. Naked gun. Check out Leslie Nielsen. He does an umpire in his ring him up calls classic. Foul back. Good swing by Buster Posey. Ooh, and that was a, that was a mistake on an 0-2 count. And Trinan really got away from it. That's a count if you're a sinker baller. If you're going to throw a fastball, a sinker, it's got to be in the dirt, or it's got to be on the hands off the plate. In you cannot make a mistake out of a plate. Not to a guy like Posey. 0-2. Pence goes hit high and deep into left center field. Span now has a route to it, and he's going to make the catch. And Pence hustles back. So you like pitching in this yard? 
Well, yeah, if you're a pitcher, you got to love this yard. I, I don't know how well he got it. He got a little too high with it. But even then, he takes it right about halfway into the warning track. Nice play from Span, who'd been playing him over in right center. But in other ballparks, that's a round tripper. Yep. About eight ballparks in the National League, that would be a home run. Here's Sandoval. Out of play. Years ago, when both of us got to the big leagues, free agency came in 1976. Prior to that, we talk about the salary drive all the time. Always. Where no free agency, you literally negotiated on your stats. If they did that now, you'd not have any hitters in this park. No, you would not. You'd have a lot of pitchers. You would. But hitters would go to Philadelphia, Cincinnati, Arizona, Colorado. They'd go to the live yards. Snap throw. And LaRoche does a good job of keeping that from moving down the right field line. And LaRoche does a nice job of saving an air and an errant throw from Lobotone the catcher. He's always had a really nice glove. Oh, he's got good hands. His dad, not so much. Dave. Foul back. What and two. Dave LaRoche, a teammate of both of ours. Left-handed pitcher. Had a nice career. And he had the really great curveball that he would throw it. Efa style, and it was called the Lalab. So here's Sandoval. One and two. Nationals have Kevin France in the second baseman in the outfield. About four steps onto the grass. So that's a modified shift for Sandoval. And this is hit to Franson again. And that will end the inning. After three, two nothing Giants. Togo's big play the Togo's way we go back to September 9 1981 game two doubleheader Yankees against the Brewers and Dave LaRoche strikes out Brewers slugger Gorman Thomas with 
the little lob and Ephus pitch. And I like it when LaRoche renamed it to La Lob. <laughs> it, was, it was an immediate hit. And that's our Togo's big play the Togo's way. I want to see it again. Here it is. That's awesome. Yeah, almost out of the, the picture. <laughs> oh, nice pick by our ball dude almost. That is Frank Malakote. Malakote. Yeah, right. Stinger. Sandoval, a real tricky hop, but a nice play. All right, now's a good time to go to Amy G. Amy? All right, Dwayne. Well, Dave Rigetti was also a teammate of Dave LaRoche. He was a rookie that year with the Yankees, and he does remember that moment that he struck out Gorman Thomas. He said that Dave was an eccentric reliever, a character, and he did whatever he had to to win. He also said guys would mess around trying to throw knuckleballs, but La Lob only belonged to LaRoche. Guys? Yeah, we had him as our closer in Cleveland for a couple of years. He was great. I really liked him a lot. Yeah, he's a lot of fun. And he was one of those veterans that really would always take time with rookies coming up. Worth hit a fly ball to center field. Hit it pretty well. Here he takes two and zero. Oh. Indians traded Dave LaRoche to the Angels so they could meet payroll in 1976. There's a strike two and one. As healthy as baseball is now financially with I'm going to say most teams back then there were a handful of teams that went check to check. Yeah. And the Indians were one of them. This is wrapped into the left center field. Pagan got a good jump and he's going to make the catch. That's a nice play. It had to be perfect. You had to get a good jump and it had to have a great route. You could not have any loop in that route whatsoever. We're going to make it a forward right choice. And you get to see a chance to see what a route, a great route runner can do in taking away an extra base hit. And this really was. An exceptional line from a good first step right to the ball and Tim Hudson saying yeah. Worth with a major hang dog going back into the dugout. <laughs> well he had, had extra bags taken away from him. Here is Mr. Lalab Jr. And he takes wide one and oh. Well with a father like Dave LaRoche you would expect his sons. To be a bit yeah, eccentric. Yeah, you would think so. Like grow beards and wear white sunglasses. And Dave always fancied himself as a good hitter, even though he never hit in the American League. One of two LaRoche brothers to play in the big leagues. Adam's brother Andy played a number of years with the Dodgers and the Cubs. And this is lifted into center field. And Pagan this time will back off and you'll play it on a bounce. So a two out single bringing Ryan Zimmerman to the plate. Zimmerman popped out to Pablo Sandoval and his only other at bat. Blown away one and oh. Phillies beat the Padres. Padres are struggling right now. They beat him today seven to three. I think that's four losses in a row. Yes. Four losses in a row now for San Diego. Good breaking ball. I mean the difference in his breaking ball today and in his last start against New York, I'm I'm not it's night and day. It's not even close. And all that has to do with arm strength. Feeling much stronger to, in this particular start. Oh, 
And that's rolled to the backstop. It's one and two. The Padres record now. 28 and 38. Arizona, which will play in Houston tonight, they're 29 and 39. And that gets away from Buster Posey. And moving down to second is LaRoche. That'll be a pass ball. I wonder if Buster thought he was going to get something on that ball, some type of movement, and didn't. Two and two. That's just good late movement. You can get handcuffed if you're a catcher. And that's tap foul. I think sinker ballers are the hardest guys to catch. If you catch a sinker ball in the wrong spot in your hand, it'll ring you up. You'll get a bowl of lighting that'll go from the palm of your hand all the way up to your shoulder. And both catchers today have that ability to catch one wrong. Hudson's sink is at 88. Trinan's sink is at 95. Blocked by Buster Posey. It's three and two. No walks for Hudson. One walk for the Nationals who don't walk anybody. So three and two to Ryan Zimmerman. And this is driven to right. Pence gets to it. He kicks it around. And coming in to score is LaRose. So Zimmerman picks up the two out RBI, and now the pass ball hurts. And the pass ball indeed hurts. And that's how you take advantage of a mistake. Nice at bat, though, from Zimmerman. 3 2 count. How do you beat a sinker ball if you're a right hander hitting a right handed sinker ball, or you go the other way? A little slider there, and not a hanger either. I mean, this is behind the outside corner. Just a good, strong, strong top hand. So the Nationals on the board. So here's Desmond, who's single in the second. And a strike, and it's 0 and 1. And moves him off the plate to even the count. One ball and one strike. This is the one spot in the lineup where, where mm -hmm. you really had to pay close attention to the scout report coming into the series. Because if you looked up at the start of the series and saw what what Desmond was hitting, he was hitting 238. You're thinking, oh, no problem. 238 hitter. Actually, he was hitting 230. I beg your pardon. And he has really been one of the hottest hitters, not just with the Nationals, but in the league. And Sandoval. To the force play and that'll end the inning. A run on two hits. It's an unearned run. It's 2 1 Giants.
with written consent of San Francisco Baseball Associates, LLC. Well, Friday, June 13th is the second Orange Friday Happy Hour presented by Lagunitas Brewing Company. It's country and western night as California country will be performing live in Seals Plaza pregame from 5 to 7. Your special event package will include a Giants cowbell, a cowbell, a, a cowbell? That's right, a Giants cowbell, a complimentary beverage, and a game ticket as the Giants will then take on the Rockies. For tickets, go to sfgiants.com slash special events. And remember, more cowbell. Here's the pitch to Morris, and he takes high. Michael Morris singled and scored in the second. And he taps this one foul, so it's one ball and one strike. Colorado now leading Atlanta three to nothing that game in the seventh in Denver. It's like a beautiful day in Denver. We have no beautiful days in Denver when they're on get up. When we're about ready to get out of town. There's a strike. You're right. So I, I got, can't remember the last time. I got a little bit of a problem with that. I just really don't think we get treated well there. <laughs> By Mother Nature or the newspaper. Uh, just kidding. Two two pitch. Down the right field line. Foul. Hey, young Nationals fan. Brought his glove, got the reward. We had a couple of the uh, Washington people come up to us yesterday and say we have never seen so many gloves at a ballpark in our life. Yeah, it's true, and it's true. AT&T leads the world. Up the middle and another hit for Morris. Almost a carbon copy hit from the one he had in the second. Well, that was not a hanger either. I mean, that thing was shoot top high. Look how low this ball is, and he just goes down and golfs it right back up the middle. Just really has nice adjustments that he can make and is it bad up the middle. And he could take swing out. He's a good hitter. Colvin tripled in the second inning. Knocked in Morse, and then he scored on the Crawford ground ball. Two and oh. No, just miss. You're not going to get those low ones you saw the previous two nights. Strike zones with Phil Cuzzy and Alfonso Marquez. Very low strike zones, but with Jerry Davis, he's a high ball umpire. Just what you said. So a nice at bat from Colvin. Here's Crawford. And the one thing we've seen Brandon Crawford do a lot of this year against sinker ballers from the right side is go to left field. That has always been one of his strengths from the some of the earliest clips we have of him coming up through the Giants organization. He always had the ability to go to left field. And it really is a useful approach if you're a lefty hitting off a sinker ball. Here's Crawford. 
five out of the strike zone in a row for Trinan and uh, Steve Bacchetti is going to come up. Bacchetti re realizes that with each ball he throws, it's going to get harder to throw a strike. So right now you just break the string, go out there and, and loosen him up. And Bacchetti really is a very good pitching coach. And I think one of his strengths is being able to bring a young pitcher back into the moment of the game. He can bring an old pitcher back as well. I mean, this is one of the things he really excels in. A beloved pitching coach, much like Dave Bergetti. I mean, both these pitchers coaches in this today's game, their, their players love him. Well, time to log on to CSNBayArea.com and decide the player of the game. Your vote counts. Winner will be revealed during Giants postgame live. Follow the action on the diamond like never before with enhanced Bloomberg stats and more. Giants in-game live on CSNBarrier.com. Log on right now and vote. It's 1-0 to Crawford. And it's one ball and one strike. Yeah, people will tell you the first pitch you see after the pitching coaches out there might be the best one you're going to see. And Crawford let it fly. In the defense. Pretty much straight away in the outfield. Hmm. And a changeup. So two good pitches and a quick one two count. Last three games with runners in scoring position, Giants two for 16. Previous five games, he hit 342 in that scenario. It was almost automatic. 242 is fantastic. 342 is off the charts. And Morris thought about it and wisely he did not go. See how they set the defense. They pitch the gap in right center, pretty standard. Span the center fielder about eight steps over to the right center field side. Two and two, not a Crawford. Three and two. And he walked it. That's a good at bat. And he's down to count one, two. And he worked it to a walk. This will be an interesting at bat because Adrianza is a good low ball hitter. That's where his power is. All the home runs he hit in spring training, and there were some long ones, were right around the knees. Middle away. And he's facing a guy who likes to throw the ball down around the knees. Out of play. Infield is plane in not all the way in you can see Desmond and Franson are more a double play depth ball hit to a corner infielder they're going home ball hit to the middle they're going to make the double play in the dirt and if you're trying in the pitcher you're going to pitch for that ground ball early in the count. And if you get to an 0-2 or a 1-2, you're going to pitch for the strikeout. The 
If you're Adrianza, you're looking for something to get in the end. And that's foul. It's right behind Quinn Walcott, the first base umpire. Good change up right there. The Giants have not done much with the off speed pitch of Trina. I mean, they're up there looking for one thing, and that's high velocity sink, and I don't blame them. Hudson's on deck. It's one and two. Two and two. Well, those sinkers are not that easy to take. I mean, they're really not. As Craig Stammen, the right hander, starts to heat up. And this is a red alert, go get hot quick type of bullpen action here for Stammen. Got him. And there's the changeup. So the strikeout he was going for, he gets. Well, that's huge because now you got Hudson. Well, that's a good. That's a good changeup. I mean, good action on it. It's got good sinking action. He's throwing it with a two seam grip. And that's a rough at bat for a young hitter. Because he just feels like he left down the world. And you might see a safety squeeze here. You don't have great speed at third, but you've got a great bunter with Hudson. And a curveball for a strike. Hudson hit the ball sharply to short in the second. It's this one on the ground. Franson, they get one there and the throw to first, and that's a double play. We'll head to the fifth inning. Kevin Franson will leave things off. Talking about Madison Bumgarner. Let's do both. It's our McDonald's true stories on this date in Giants history, June 12, 2012. Mad Bum recorded 12 strikeouts and hit a home run against the Astros. He became the first Giants pitcher to do this since, wait for it, Mike Kruko in 1985, who also accomplished the feat against the Astros. And of course, Giants fans know what happened the day following Madison's awesome outing, June 13th, 2012. Gentlemen, it was perfect, Dwayne. Wow. 
12 strikeouts. Very nicely done, my partner. What a babe. Here's Franson to lead things off. There's a side story to that. So Amy didn't get the, the real deal. Well, going into that game, and Jose Cruz is a right fielder with the Houston Astros, who I cannot get out. Massive ownage on me. So we're having a meeting, and it comes around to Jose Cruz. I go, I'm not pitching to him. If I get a two run lead, the base is loaded, I'm walking him. And I hear this voice in the back of the meeting, and it's Brad Wellman has been in the big leagues like five days. And a base hit for Franson to open up the fifth. And uh, Brad Wellman says, Cruz, Jose Cruz, you can't get him out? And I turned, looked at him, and I, I look at like 10 years in the big leagues. I said, uh, No, I can't. How do you get him out, Meat? He says, Pitch him down and in. He's got a high leg kick. You can't see it. So any meeting over. So I go out, take some hits, and I'm back in the clubhouse walking around. And I see Willie Mays, and I said, Can you believe this rookie? He said, What are you saying? I told him the story. He goes, Well, it's true. He says, Mel Ott was the same way. He couldn't hit a down and in pitch. He, he couldn't see it because of a high leg kick. Trouble from the bottom of the order is Franson moves to third. As Crawford will cut it off. And now the pitcher's coming up with runners at first and third and nobody out. Well, how'd you do against him? Went out that night, struck him out three times. <laughs> Down and in. Couldn't see it. And after each time, I kept looking over at Brad Wellman, tipped my cap. And I bought him dinner. And never forgot the lesson. And the lesson was you can learn from anybody. Keep your ears open. It made me a better pitcher against guys like that. And the next start I had was against the Mets, and they had a highly touted rookie who was tearing up the league. And I watched him take batting practice, and he had a high leg kick. It was Daryl Strawberry. Pitched him the same way, and he couldn't hit it. Nice going, Brad Wilman. Here's Trinan. And he bunts this one foul. So baseball knowledge can come come at you from a lot of different directions. Could be a coach, could be a teammate, could be somebody sitting in the stands, somebody writing in a letter. Oh and two. Bob Henley, the third base coach, going through a whole set of signs for Trinan. And Trinan's out. And that's a big play. Because now, with a first and third one out situation, Hudson can put pitch for the ground ball. Now, Denard Span is not an easy guy to get. To hit into a double play, but by getting the unproductive out out of Trinan, he at least has a chance to do it. So here's Span. Span is bounced out and then he got caught looking in the third. Franson's at third with one out. And that pitch is wide, one and oh. Nationals last three games hit 182, four for 22. With runners in scoring position, that has been their Achilles' heel. Hit up the middle, 
Crawford steps on the bag. Double play. What a nice play. And what a nice job by Hudson to get the speedy spin. It remains 2-1 the Giants. Bay Area is brought to you by Big O Tires. Tires, service, straight talk. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Giants hanging on to a two to one lead here in the home half of the fifth inning. Giants squandered an opportunity in the fourth. And the Nationals just squandered one in the top of the inning. There the two are still hanging in there. Yep. Let's take a look at the double play that ended it. And a nice pick as Crawford had to go get it and come back to the bag. That's a strong leg to play. And he didn't have a lot of time to do it because Span can run. Nice pick. Magan has bounced out twice. And it's low. And watch the movement here coming back with a right foot step on the bag, make a throw, and then avoid contact. And uh, Jose Lobaton was really barreling in on Crawford. And everything about that play was pretty spectacular. You can see Pagan taking all the way. It's now one and one. Out of play one and two. Tim Hudson 132 ground ball outs and that leads the National League and that is something he's always been very good at getting. Because of that good sinker. Slider everything he has will get ground balls. He needed one then got it. And that's what got him out of the inning. Two and two to Angel Pagan. Out of play. Flick of the wrist, fight out that two strike. Yeah, he'll serve foul balls that way, but he'll also serve balls in the left field that way. That's really been a good stroke for him, especially in two strike counts. And especially against sinker ballers from the right side. It's something he works on every day in the batting cage. 
got it. Front door sink and uh, Angel Pagan is not going to like that one. See the target from Lobotone, and that is definitely a pitcher's strength. The agony of a front door sinker. The Peter. agony of Cotton Kennedy that won't get off your finger. <laughs> Hence takes a strike. Well, it's better than a pine tar rag. Yeah. Stickier anyway. Tastes better. Oh, and two. Two strikeouts for Trinan. And this is a base hit up the middle. Pence on for the third time. And here's Buster Posey. That's what he's supposed to do the hang and breaking ball. Posey hit one out to the warning track and left center field in the third. Branson shovels it to Desmond, and that's a double play, and that'll end the inning. We'll head to the six. It remains 2 1 Giants. On Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by 22 Jump Street in theaters June 13th. Another sellout crowd today, and they're watching a two to one lead for the Giants. It'll be Rendon, Worth, and LaRoche. Turned out to be a gorgeous day for baseball this morning. It was really overcast, very cool. But come first pitch, the skies parted, sun came out, and it's been sunny ever since.
breaking ball to Rendon one ball and no strikes. And what was our scout, our scout report on the weather it from B.I. Mostly cloudy. Yep. What does B.I. stand for? Bogus information. Especially about the weather. One zero pitch. It was a strike. That's how you take out a one zero advantage for a hitter. The hitters love one zero counts, two zero counts. They can sit on one pitch, one location. But when you nail down the outside corner at the knees of the slider, that takes that away. Location can neutralize advantage. If you're a pitcher that can locate. In on the hands of Rendon, and it's a one and two. So Hudson rubs up to new baseball. That's down the right field line. It's going to slice into the seats right through the bullpen. It's into the sea of gloves down there. And that little section of the ballpark might be where everybody has a glove on down there, yeah, it seems. That's foul ball alley. I mean, it just looks so cool when he gets caught by a fan with a glove on. Just miss with 92 seam action going in on his hands. Bring him up. Good pitch. Well, the Nationals are leaving town, and tomorrow it's the Rockies that come into AT&T, and it will be a promotion-filled weekend. Tomorrow night is fireworks night, presented by Snapple. Saturday, the first four, the 14th, the first 20,000 fans receive a Mad Bum camo cap, courtesy of StubHub. That's a 105 start. And on Sunday, also a 105 start, Father's Day, the first 20,000 fans will receive a Giants necktie, presented by State Farm. Tickets remain for all three Rockies games. Go to sfgiants.com slash tickets. Worth takes a strike. Worth has hit the ball hard twice. Both times Pagan has tracked his fly balls down. The last one was a really nice catch. More of a line drive. Balls and a strike. Adam LaRoche on deck. One run ball game. These are the kind of guys you you hold your breath with if you're a fan watching. Worth lots of power and I mean everywhere. Line to line. Morris will give chase, but that'll be about 10 rows back. Gamer babe. She brought her sign. And that little guy got the ball. And that is how we roll here at AT&T. Gentleman caught a pop up. Gave it to a kid. Beautiful. Bob Henley, third base coach, base, making a nice play.
Two balls, two strikes. Out of play again. Seen Worth have a lot of at bats like this where he really will see a lot of pitches. He's really good at, at fighting off corner nastiness to see another pitch. And we saw last night what he can do in a two strike count. He homered off Matt Cain in a similar style at bat that he's having now against Hudson. So that two two pitch was very high. Three and two. And he walked it. That's good at bat. And you know, you took look at the two tall hitters in today's game. One being worth a six five, and the other one being Michael Morris, who's six five. And both guys have a, a, a a similarity in their style of hitting is that they will work a pitcher. They're not just brain dead hacks up there trying to launch grenades. They're they're hitters. So here's LaRoche. And LaRoche takes a strike. 81 pitches here in the sixth inning for Hudson. Giants put on a shift. The whole left side of the infield just about opened up. Very close. Hudson lobbied a little bit. It's one ball and one strike. All right, how close was it? Close. It's definitely one you'd want if you're a pitcher. There's not a hitter who's ever played the game would tell you that's a strike. That one, however. But remember, this is a high ball guy behind the plate, Jerry Davis. He's been consistent. He hasn't called those today. But that is very, very good pitch. Two and one, and Hudson uh, will check on Worth. Worth does have three stolen bases. Three and one. Is not happy with that 2 1 changeup. That was an easy take. I mean, he's trying to pound the knees. He's trying to get that ground ball to get that double play. And that last changeup in his mind was a wasted pitch. Well, it's 3 and 1. And the walk. So two walks and the Nationals have a little something going here. So Dave Rigetti out. Gutierrez now heading down to the bullpen. So Dave Rigetti. Words of wisdom.
So here's Zimmerman who knocked in a run in the fourth inning. And he takes wide 1 and 0. So Hudson starting to hear it a little bit from the crowd or the umpire. Well, it can frustrate you. I mean, you're, you're facing a guy that is a very good hitter, who's got good power. You're trying to work the corners, make good location pitches. If you're not getting pitches that you think you should be getting, it's frustrating. There's a strike, especially in a in a one-run ball game. So it's a ball and a strike to Zimmerman. And this hitting the ground towards the hole. Crawford's got it. He'll go to third and they get the fourth play. Well, that's a great ad lib right there, man. That's the only out he could get. And really a nice job of Sandoval identifying that that was going to be the play and getting back to third base. So it's a nice little spear job and a flip and there was no other opportunity for Crawford. No time to set his feet for second no chance to get it first. And you can see worth identifying that this is where it was going to go and there was nothing he could do about it. So a big out. Nice play. So here's Desmond Desmond is singled and he's bounced out to third. And this is hit up the middle and it's Adrianza to Crawford and that'll end the inning. Just for a second it looked like it was going to get through and it remains two to one Giants. employee benefits and financial services visit us at hefins.com and by xfinity home of the most live sports here it's two to one giants is pablo sandoval is going to hit but it's time for a change thing speedy oil change and auto service your oil change tune-up and repair experts Craig Stammen, the new pitcher now for Washington. 17 games he has been in. This will be number 18, 0 and 2 with a 2.56 ERA. Good strikeout walk ratio, 5 to 1. And he's a four pitch guy, fastball, curveball, slider, change up, but good sink. You'll see a lot of ground balls. And he's a strike thrower. And Sandoval steps up. He's grounded out twice to Franson at second. And he bounces this one into the hole for a base hit. And that's the thing about sinker ballers that the, there's going to be days when they find holes. And for a hot hitter like Sandoval, 
Right now he's a hole finder. I just don't think Stanton thought that Sandoval could reach that pitch. He kind of turned around and looked in the air like, are you serious? Morris is two for two. Waiting on Sandoval to get the gear on his hand. Tap to third, foul. In arm swing, hugging the line down third base. You're thinking it had a chance to be fair. So third base umpire Phil Cuzzy with a call. And the shadow goes over the bag, but the ball does not. So foul ball, very close. Sandoval going in there trying to bust it up. Makes contact, heads right back to first. And a base hit into left center field. Sandoval is going to hit the bag. He will go to third. And Morse with his third hit. He can hit. Let's take a look. They set the inside corner up, and he beats the scout report. That was pretty much to the glove from Stamina. And really a nice play here from Zimmerman who cuts it off. I thought off the crack of the bat had a chance to get through, but not so. At the very least, though, they get a first and third. And nobody out. So here's Colvin. Colvin is tripled and he's walked. And a balk in the Giants lead three to one. Well, that's a thank you very much. And significant, obviously, they score a run, but they lose the force with the sinker baller. Now, watch Stammen as he comes set. That's a stop and a start right there. And you cannot do that. Once you start a movement out of that, that bent position, you've got to come all the way up to an erect position. And Jerry Davis, the crew chief, calling that immediately. And that was an easy call. And Colvin takes a strike. Knocked down by Lobatone. So Trinan went five and now Stammen. That Williams. Nothing you can do about a Bach. Seethe, maybe. Talking with Matt Williams yesterday, he said that's the one difficult thing about being a manager. Once you write down that line, there's not a lot you can do about it. You can't take it at bat. You can't throw a pitch. You can't make a play. Two and one to Colvin. Swing and a miss. Two and two. I'm not happy about that. The back foot slider he swung over the top of. I don't think Matt Williams is the only manager that's ever felt that way. But he'll get used to it. He's a rookie. Nationals bullpen, the best ERA in the National League. And they've allowed the fewest home runs collectively as a group with 10. And that ties them with the fewest in the league. And 
Yeah, Stanley going right back down there too, yep. trying it again. That's a smart pitch. Three two pitch here it is. And this has popped up. It'll be Franson who will make the catch. Colvin will not be happy about that at bat and here's Crawford. Well, in, in a no out situation the very least you want to do is have a productive out that allows. Morris a chance to get the third. So no he will not be happy with that. Crawford has an RBI and a ground ball in the second, then he drew a walk in the fourth. Down low. Yeah, the gloves have been good for the Giants. Oh, indeed. And this play by Crawford to get him in and out where there was nothing else available, a big play. And then. Andreanza coming back up, going to his left well, a little flip to Crawford to end the inning on a force at second. I thought that one was a hit. I did too. One to Crawford. So Stammen has come in and he's thrown 12 pitches. Just pounding the knees and let this movement take it down below the zone, hoping that Crawford chases. Good pitch, good take. Uh, Stanley's got an open base here too, and sinker ballers don't mind walking a guy to set that force up because they know they can get a ground ball and get out of the inning. Plus, there's no one up in the bullpen, and he knows that Crawford has had the hot hand in these situations. Basically, pitching around him. Franson, not in time. And I don't think there was anything else that Franzen could do. And that way it's going to come out and at least give the Nationals a chance to review this back in the clubhouse to see if it was indeed a play that it might get reversed. A little backhand flip. I think it's a tie. I think it was a tie. I don't know if there's enough there to review, to, to overturn it. There, it looks like he beat it. Yeah. That, that'll stay. That'll be a thumbs down, and I would, don't think that they'll go to the uh, to the camera. And indeed, that's the case. Nationals do not contest. It's changed the game, hasn't it? It really has, and, it, and I think it's changed it in a very good way. I think the one thing it does is you get more plays right. But it really takes the heat off the umpires. Oh, they all love it. We're talking about it with Joe West. The last series when Joe West was here was his, with his crew. He said, we love it. All we want to do is get the play right. The heat's off us. You know, and if we're proved wrong, we don't care. We just want to get it right. And that's the attitude that you were hoping that the umpires would have. And indeed, they do have it. So here's Blanco. Blanco's going to pitch hit for Adrianza. Mm 
Morris at third. Crawford at first. Swing and a miss. No balls in one strike. Hey, Blanco coming off the bench, letting it fly. And a soft toss, and Crawford gets back. So Crawford with his first hit. He's now one for two with a walk. He'll take an infield hit. It wasn't that long ago, Crawford was in the 230s. He's now close to 260. Out of play, nothing in two. There's a lot of guys who really resurrected their season and you know, Blanco remember he was hit yeah. 071 and now he's up to 242 you get around 250 after you've been on the bingo card for a long time and you start feeling good about looking at that statue again when you're hitting 071 you're not looking at the statue no you're not reading the paper either no that's like having your era in the sixes Blanco with a base hit to left. Morris scores. It's four to one. More like it. And Hudson's got to be digging this. He absolutely is digging this. So here's Hudson. Hudson takes wide. You remember the Sunday newspaper for a long time would list the National League hitters and the American League hitters, and they would list everybody's average. Yep. From the highest to the lowest. And I really got hit with the sophomore jinx in 1976. It was awful. Hudson bunts it foul. Were you at the bottom I of the list? I was the last, very last one. You were the last the guy? The last guy. Well, that gets a little heavy down there, doesn't it? It does. So I got a fan letter from a guy that wrote a really nice letter. He said, look, you're a good player, blah, blah, blah. But he said, I do have a suggestion. He said, cut those averages out. Hold them up. Turn him upside down, and you're leading the league in hitting. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. It worked. Yeah, I was going. feeling real good. But that was myself. easy. Hi, it's two balls and one strike. Well, they did the same thing with pitchers and, and their ERAs. And there was a few times I was way down there it's at the like, bottom. I used to really enjoy the Sunday paper until 1976. <laughs> I was like, no, I think I'll pass. No, I can't be looking at that. Hudson pops it up and it's going to be foul. I don't know how you and I would have done if we'd have played where you can, in an instant, get your average, your ERA, what you've done against other pitchers. It, it, it may have drove. It, may, it could have drove me nuts. Let's put it that way. Well, Stamman came into the game with an ERA of 2.56. Now it's 3.09. So he can turn around and see that. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. No. Hudson bounces it foul. Might take on that. Just get out of there. Don't worry about it. Yeah, not a problem. He's not going to be happy with it. But. Well, no, in his last outing, though, or his last at bat in the third inning or fourth inning, he had into a double play. It was an inning ender. Now the Giants at least get Pagan up there, and they can add 
with two men on base. So the strikeout from Hudson, not a problem. Pagan is 0 for 3. Rockies in town tomorrow night. They're throwing a whipping on the, the Braves this afternoon. They had a little dust up in that game, too. And a strike to Pagan. That's a good break ball right there. Pretty good numbers against Stamen. I think that's ownage. That's nine for 14 with five extra base hits, hitting a cool 6.43. Yeah, I'm saying the the ownage factor is off the charts there. Which is another reason that it was not a bad thing that Tim Hudson no. struck out, didn't swing in, hit into double play. And a strike is now one and two. And now Lobatone wants to have a word. Yeah, Pagan made a nice play in this game. Ball hit by Jason Wood. It really had to be perfect from the guns perspective. The first step had to be great, and then the route had to be perfect. And he was like an arrow to the ball. And there was no room for error in that attempt to catch the ball. And Pagan lifts it to left. And Zimmerman's going to put it away. And that'll end the inning. Giants pick up two after six. 4 1 Giants. Toyota game summary is brought to you by your local Toyota dealer and a 4 1 lead right now for the Giants. 1 1 5 hits no errors for the Nationals. 4 runs, 9 is no errors for the Giants. Blake Trinan is on hook here. He went, pitched really pretty good. Five hits allowed, a couple of earnings. Tim Hudson, outstanding. No earned runs. He has 89 pitches through six. Solid outing as usual. We would come to expect. Tyler Cole with a big swing of the bat today. One for two, a triple that got the Giants on the board. And that is our Toyota game summary. Brandon Hicks is in the game. He's at second.
as Hudson will throw to Kevin Franson, and that pitch is in tight. One ball and no strikes. Kevin Franson has been a very busy national these last four days, doing a lot of interviews. Brandon Hicks now at second base as Adrianza is out of the ball game. This is chopped to Crawford. I was shocked that I could actually do the KMBR show with Franson actually being on every day. Well, I, we have to talk about Lee Hammer. I, it, it sounded to me like it was the Kevin Franson show like three or four different times a day. I know. Every time slot morning, afternoon, evening. Yeah, and if he wasn't on, FP was on. FP Santangelo, who is a, a broadcaster for the Nationals, lots of Bay Area ties. Here's Lobatone. There's FP. Works with Bob Carpenter, and they do a really nice job. We don't know how they do it, but they do. There's Bob. Given where they're located and their press box at Nationals Park. All right, I'll get over it. Very high press box. Very high. Highest press box in the National. Well, all of baseball, as a matter of fact. Although we haven't been to Minnesota yet, we assume they have a normal press box. There you see the Giants. Great vantage point. We're not saying their ballpark is bad. It's a beautiful yard. Oh, it is fantastic. And it, we really encourage Giants fans if you ever find yourself in Washington, whether or not the Giants are there, go see a ball game there. Fantastic venue. Just don't try and broadcast a game. <laughs> yeah, there's a, a base hit by Lobatone. All right, let's check in with Amy G. Amy, what do you got? All right, gentlemen, I know you're teasing Kevin Franzen, but in all seriousness, I did speak to him before the game, and he said it was difficult for him to put into words what the Giants organization means to him. Of course, he's a Bay Area kid. He just bought a home in San Jose with his new wife, and he said he'll always be grateful to the Giants for drafting him, for being able to make his major league debut with a team he grew up a fan of. And the organization still works with his family on their charitable foundation. So he loves the Giants. Yes, still. he does. Okay. Yeah. Up today. He's a good guy. He really is. Here's Dobbs. Dobbs hitting 182 as he taps this one foul. For Hudson, he's at 97 pitches. And with Span on deck. Yeah, if Dobbs were to reach, you might see Hudson out of the game. Who knows? Well, I bet money on it. Out of play down the left field line, 0 and 2. We're in the top of the seventh inning. Tone single with one out. Got him. Elevator fastball. And you could not throw a better one than this. Look at the uppercut. And right above the hands. And that is basically a grab some pine meat pitch. Beautiful. So here's Span. Span is 0 for 3. Crawford turned a nifty double play in the fifth with Span at the plate. Runners at first and third. One out. Ball hit. Over the bag and Crawford actually as Mike described it went past the bag and had to come back. 
I thought that was the best play of the game. And a very important play at that point. Two and oh. Did you ever look in the dugout and not you know asked to come out but look in to like the pitching coach like I'm gassed. Yeah I have. You don't want to make it too obvious right. Yeah but. Back in the days when there was a lot of turf when the turf would heat up and it'd be 130 140 degrees there were times. Three and oh. You could hit a wall very quickly there. But you know what usually the catchers already done it for you. He's already looked into the managers and. He's done. Hudson needs to throw a strike here. And he does. Popped him up. This might not be an easy play. Well, it will for Pagan, and he makes the catch, and that'll end the inning. No runs to hit one left. And the Giants will have Pence, Posey, and Sandoval, and watch the ovation for Tim Hudson here at AT&T Park. Here, good stuff from that guy. Tim Hudson is. He worked his way through seven innings. When it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up and repair experts. And. It's Aaron Barrett. So here's Pence. Aaron Barrett, the new pitcher now for the Washington Nationals, and we saw him earlier in this series. 
And sharply on the ground. Desmond can't come up with it. And he's got his third hit. And he's been on base four times. Have a day. In game one of this ball game, we saw Aaron Barrett, and in that ball game, he came in and he drilled Michael Morse. You see the line for Tim Hudson. Beautiful. Seven solid, one run, no earned runs, a couple walks, five strikeouts. He's just a quality stop job here, giving his team a chance to, to win this game four of this four game series. So here's Buster Posey. And a strike. And Barrett's a hard thrower. You're going to see low to mid 90s fastball with a hard slider, and he's got a little bit of a wild hair up his nose. He will pitch aggressively inside. But like I say, he drilled Michael Moore, so in, in, in the eyes of the Giants, that was his mulligan. After that, better not do it again. Nice block. It's one ball and one strike. We're in the seventh. Back to that flashback in game one. This is when he got Morris. And it was a absolute side torpedo. Anytime you see a ball reverse direction, you know he hit that hitter very solidly. And indeed he did. Giants haven't forgotten. And Michael Morris has not forgotten. You know, and really, uh, a relief pitcher kind of gets a free pass because he doesn't have to hit. That's right. But I do know this. Giants would love to lay about four earned runs on him right now. And now Pence will go. And he'll make it. <laughs> they have four or five. Earned runs on him and maybe hit a couple of line drives off his kneecap. And that's kind of how hitters think. This is a couple. So Desmond, the shortstop, coming in very quickly to find out what the what the signs are. Middle infielders have to know. Usually they're pretty simple. Usually first sign after two, first sign. Last sign. Tapped. And the out at first is Buster Posey and Pence moves to third. Yeah, you have to dumb those signs down for those middle infielders. <laughs> well, you can't make them too complicated with the guys coming out of the pin. Here Sandoval infield will play in. Sandoval. Let off the sixth inning with a base hit the left field and eventually scored. No strikes. Hit out into right center field. Pence will tag. He will score. It's five to one. Nice at bat. And Sandoval gets a nice applause for the effort. So here's Morris. For three, three singles. Score twice.
Probably going to let out the shaft on one of these swings. Yeah, I would think so. And he's sitting at a 1 0 count right now. How would you approach it about after a guy drilled you? Well, I, and you know my reputation for hitting the ball out of the park. Well, you weren't a home run hitter, but I mean, it did intensify your concentration. Yeah, absolutely. You could try really hard to hit one back up the middle, but most of the time that doesn't work. But you can hit the ball hard somewhere. As you, and you can sure make sure you don't get jammed so you look bad. <laughs> guy hits you and then you get jammed. That's not good. Yeah, you don't want to have your bat broken. Huh? But you might see a 3 0 hack right here. You mean like drop down to that back knee? Pretty good 3 0 pitch right there. Popped him up. Desmond. Side retired. A run on one hit. Eighth inning coming up. 5 1 Giants. Giants game earlier Dwayne and Mike were talking about sometimes you just can't pay attention to the numbers and guys that's exactly the way that Brandon Crawford is approaching this season he was struggling against right handed pitching he's turned it around since June since June 1st entering today's game he's 10 for 26 against right handed pitchers and of course in his last two games he's hit a triple off of a right handed pitcher but he told me before today's game he's just keeping it simple he likes how he's swinging the bat right now and he tries to hit it up the middle and he does not look at his numbers guys. Well that's good if you can do that that's great. I couldn't I could do it. I was figuring out my numbers running down the line when it's time for a change. Think speedy oil change and auto service your oil change tune up and repair experts. New pitcher now for the Giants will be Gene Machi, 29th time that he's come in. And we see it every time he comes in. He's having a great first half, 5 0 with an 0 3 2 ERA, a couple of saves. Just 21 base runners and 28 innings pitched, and nobody's hitting him. And he gets the beef, started by Rendon, and he takes in tight. Rendon has bounced out twice and he struck out. Worth and then Adam LaRoche he pitches high. Yeah. 
games are going to be a little longer against the Nationals because they've all done a good job of working the count. There's a strike. And I, I, I think that's a, a personality trait you see from older teams, experienced teams. And it's a pretty good philosophy. I mean, you consider that pitch count has everything to do with how long a starting pitcher is going to stay in a game. This is stroked into center field for a base hit. And if you as a team can get a lot of pitches out of a starting pitcher, you can get him out of a ball game early. And that's significant if you get a, a stud starting pitcher out there. Get that bullpen quick. Here's Worth. Worth is 0 for 2. He drew a walk in the sixth. And a strike to Worth. I mean, that's the one thing about Machi. He, he, he's so well established now for that forkball that you forget he throws mid 90s fastball. And that was a 94 mile an hour two seamer. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. And that's the forkball. And that just impressed Jason Worth. He got to take a walk and think about what he just saw. And I can tell you what he's thinking. Please don't throw that one again. That's a good one. And after you put 94 on the previous pitch, I mean, that's a nasty two pitch combination. About the statistics of the Nationals bullpen. Well, the Giants got a pretty good pin too. First in wins, second in ERA, first in saves, second in opponent opponent batting average against. Let's see why both teams are in first place. Ooh. Good pitch right there. You better have a good eye and a trust in your umpire to take that one. Two strikes or a reputation. <laughs> Just wrapped around the corner. Tap to Crawford. Crawford to Hicks. Hicks to Morris. Double play. And that's the other beautiful thing about the fork ball is it will get ground balls when it's hit. Nice high bounce for Crawford. Easy exchange. And you always talk type about how accurate he is to Hicks and that is a perfect chest high feed. And a nice relay with a lot of heat coming in on him from Rendon. And on the backside, Michael Morris completes the low backhander. And Machi's digging it. Here's LaRoche, who's one for two. In tight, one ball and no strikes. For two of the walk, beef up his on base percentage. His on base percentage is at 422, and that puts him up there where the elite on base percentage guys are. And a strike to even the count. Swing and a miss, one and two. So LaRoche behind now, one ball, one ball and two strikes. Overshift is on.
And just maybe a little bit high. No, that was the elevator that Buster Posey wanted. And when you cleanse the sight line with a high fastball, you go right back down around the knees with a fork. Pagan back. Null in the inning. With the help of the double play, a quick inning. It's a 5-1 lead for the Giants. Stay tuned for the post-game wrap that's coming up. And Mike will also talk about the game with Murph and Mac tomorrow morning on KMBR 680. That would be Friday morning. Here's Colvin. A little bit of a woe is me show today. Lost three in a row. Not bad though. Well, I mean, Giants fans have not been used to it. But the Nationals have definitely made their presence felt here. And Colvin's going to go the other way with a hit. Well, Friday, June 13th is fireworks night. Come see your Giants take on the National League West rival, Colorado Rockies, at 7:15. Then stick around for a spectacular. Fireworks show over McCovey Cove. And due to popular demand, an additional fireworks show has been scheduled for the July 2nd game when the Giants will take on the Cardinals. So don't miss the fireworks on and off the field this summer right here at AT&T Park. Go to sfgiants.com slash tickets and get your tickets. Crawford, one for two. He's got an RBI. And he takes wide 1 and 0. Oh. The Nationals will travel to St. Louis and they'll start a three game series tomorrow night. Jordan Zimmerman against Lance Lynn. Down the left field line. This could be trouble. And it is. Colvin will be held up. Second and third. Nobody out.
Going the opposite way has been such a strong point of the approach of Brandon Crawford as he continues to increase that batting average every day. So, Giants doing what they wanted to do against Aaron Barrett for drilling Morris the other day. They're putting a couple earned runs on him. One so far, two out on the bases. Here's Hicks. Hicks batting for the first time. Blanco hit for Adrianza in the sixth inning and knocked in a run with a base hit. There's a good curveball, one ball and one strike. Hector Sanchez has come out on the on deck circle. He will pinch hit for Machi. There's Hector. One and two. Back to back breaking balls, and I mean good ones. So Barrett putting up a fight. He's the man. There's nobody down there in that Nationals bullpen. And they're going to say he went around. Quinn Wolcott, the rookie umpire, bringing him up. All right, did he go? Let's take a look. <laughs> That's close. Could have gone either way. So here's Sanchez. One out, runners at second and third infield all the way in. And it's low, one ball and no strikes. Two and oh, look out. Like I say, this kid is not afraid to come inside. This is a long road trip for the Nationals. They finished the series here with the Giants and then head on a plate and head to St. Louis for the third city of a 10 game road trip. So pitch them backwards two balls in one strike. Nationals will not see the Giants until August 22nd, 3rd, and 4th in Washington. Should be nice and cool by then. Oh, beautiful weekend series. And that's a base hit. Colvin scores, Crawford scores, and now the Giants break it open here in the eighth. Hector Sanchez picking up Brandon Hicks. One out, base hit, knocks in a couple. And Michael Morris somewhere in that Giants dugout. That bruise on his ribs is feeling a little better. Here's Pagan. Pagan 0 for 4. And he hits it into left center field. Span will give way to Zimmerman. 
two outs. Well, join us tomorrow night. Giants are going to take on the Rockies' first game of a three-game series. Pre-game live at 6:30 right here on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Complete Giants coverage every night on Sportsnet Central and CSNBayArea.com with Giants insider Andrew Baggerly. The home of your San Francisco Giants is Comcast Sportsnet. Tim Linscum taking on Jorge De La Rosa tomorrow night. Pence has had a good day, three singles and a walk. He scored a run. Giants win this ball game today. They would avoid being swept. They have not been swept in a series this year. And they've never been swept in a four game series here at AT&T Park. Well, I didn't realize there was that much at stake. Last time the Giants were swept in a four game series here in San Francisco was 1996. Outside. Three and zero to Pence. I'm sure Baird has looked out of the bullpen and there's nothing going on. Until now, and that's ball four. And Lobotone sent out by Matt Williams to go kill a little time while they can get Jerry Blevins seated up. Buster today is bounced out. He had a fly ball to deep left center field in the third that was caught. Then hit a sharp ground ball to Kevin Franson who made a nice play. Turned it into a double play. And then he hit one back to the pitcher in the seventh. So now Steve McCaddy going to come out and he'll take a little more time. And for Jerry Blevins, he's going to need about nine or ten pitches. Blevins can get to get, get to an established fastball fairly quickly. It's not that cold out there today. Well, he's he's going to have all the time in the world to get loose. Time now for our Honda player of the game. And we think Tim Hudson has been that guy once again. It seems like every time he goes out there, he is the Honda player of the game. But seven innings, six hits, one unearned run allowed, a couple of walks and a strikeout. And uh, as he attempted to stop this three game losing streak, well, he's our Honda player of the game. And after today's seven innings, Without giving up an earned run, he now leads the major leagues with an ERA of 1.81. What a great first half. Here's Posey who takes low, one ball and no strikes. Strike that evens the count. Two balls and a strike to Buster Posey. I mean, those are the two looks a pair gives you. I mean, he's going to give you a fastball that could be low to mid 90s and a slider. I mean, that's it. Can see where this young pitcher can improve if you were to learn a, a change up. Circle change or a split, give him a third speed. But right now he's leaking oil. And he's getting no sympathy in the Giants dugout. And that's because of the torpedo he threw at plunked Morse with in game one of the series.
Three and one. Cozy, it's a high fly ball. Center field, span way out into the gap. We'll put it away and that'll end the inning. Giants put two more on the board. We'll go to the ninth at 7 1. That Central for that 6 p.m. right here at Comcast Sports at Bay Area. Join Dave Feldman and Andrea Nakano. The Giants will give you their clubhouse reaction. I'll have that covered. And then Matt Maiocco will be talking about the Kaepernick legal situation. And Matt Maiocco is as good as there is on nine or lower. He'll tell you all you need to know. And also, U.S. Open round one highlights and recap. And they'll talk World Cup. All that and more. AT&T Uber Sports at Central tonight, 6 p.m. 7-1 Giants. When it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service. Your oil change tune-up and repair experts. So a maintenance inning here for Sergio Romo. Coming in for the 28th time. 3-1 and one on the year with a 3-1-2 ERA. 20 saves on the year for Sergio Romo. <laughs> Hector Sanchez stays in the game now. He's catching. Buster Posey takes the rest of the afternoon off. The 20 saves for Romo are tied for the Major League lead with Frankie Rodriguez of the Milwaukee Brewers. Zimmerman, one for three. He's only faced Romo one time, and he's 0 for one lifetime. Desmond to follow. And a strike. It's one and two. The one two is outside two and two. And the two two, he got him. With a fastball. It's a 90 mile an hour fastball. I mean, that's high velocity for Romo. 
except the outside corner is rear back and go right across the letters. So here's Desmond. And it's 0 and 1. Perfect location with that slider. Trouble with good stuff today. And a good command of his stuff. And it's nothing and two. You did not see that type of snap on the last road trip. There was a time there he was mechanically a little out of whack. Not today. He has tightened it all up. He's got more velocity and he's got much more snap on the no dot slider. Got him. Everybody at some point in time during the season is going to have mechanical problems. There is no exception. Hitter, pitcher, it all happens at some point. And in the last road trip, it happened to Romo. But today, this is as good as his stuff can be. So here's Kevin Franson. Runs inside to Franson. One ball and no strike. This might be the hardest he's thrown all year. And a strike. Hudson, Machi, and Romo. And that's out of play. And it's one and two. Franson gets hit. And that'll bring up Lobatone. Well, he's had exceptional command. The Giants did feel that they owed the Nationals one, and that may have been a payback for the rib shot that Michael Morse took. Kevin Franzen knows the deal. No balls in one strike. Baseball, all debts get repaid at some time. Now it's nothing and two. <laughs> and he tried to backdoor him. It's one and two. And that's 
the ball game. So, Giants end up winning one in this series, and they do.